their money selling products, right? Makes sense, talking hardware, talking software, but others make money, think about this, selling data. And you don't pay those companies with money, you pay them by giving them access to your personal information, and that raises privacy concerns. Cybersecurity consultant Dave Hatter joins us now with how you can protect yourself. Is there a way, any way to protect yourself and live in the age we're living in today? It's, it's fascinating. I've never really thought about it that way that, you know, you know, Apple made money off this because I bought this this solid thing, but other companies just make it because I say, here, have have my innermost thoughts. They're all that, yours. That, that's exactly right, Bob. I mean, some companies, Microsoft and Apple, typically are more on the hardware and software side of things. Right. It's not to say they don't collect your data, but they're not really selling it the way others like Google or Facebook are. I mean, if you think about Facebook, they have a couple of products, but generally speaking, it's all data. They're yeah. providing you all kinds of free services, free, right, sure. as you stated, free, um, because they get your data and they sell it and make gigantic amounts of money doing it. That's crazy. Okay, let's let's start with the Android versus versus iOS debate. I'm I'm the one person in my I got a Google Pixel over here. Dave, I got a, I got a Google so, Pixel. I'm the one person in my family that my my text messages come up a different color than everybody else. <laughs> well, I've been there, Bob. I used to be an Android guy, but because Apple is much more privacy friendly and and generally better on the security front to some extent because they control their entire ecosystem. They make the hardware, yep. they make the software, they make a lot of the apps that are installed by default that people use. So, and and so far they've sort of become a privacy first company. They've made it a point and they're not selling your data. So if you're concerned about data, and again, you could argue the, the security piece of it, you're better off with an Apple, frankly. Interesting, interesting. Let's talk about how we browse the internet now. Because, I mean, you can, it's, it's Chrome, it's uh, Firefox. There's a bunch of different ways we can do it. Yeah. What's the best way to do it? So it's interesting you mentioned Chrome because, of course, yet another Google offering, I know, right? I know. It's free. It's a great web browser. It's by far the most popular web browser out there. But again, you're, you're now basically, that's, that's one more piece of the Google environment you've exposed yourself to. If you're interested in privacy, and I would argue, again, security to some extent, there are privacy on your browsers like Firefox or Tor. Yeah. Tor is kind of like the super extreme. If you're really, really paranoid, you might want <laughs> Tor. It's going to be a little slower. It's probably going to be a little more cumbersome for people to use. Firefox, in my mind, is the best middle ground. You can really, pretty much out of the box, get excellent privacy and security features. And again, they're not selling your data. It's one of those things to keep in mind. Just because you've cleared your cookies in your browser history doesn't mean they don't still know. That's right, because that data is being sent through your internet service provider. Yeah. It's being sent to the endpoints. And, and Firefox makes it easy to do some of those things you said, to set it up so it'll automatically clear your history. It'll automatically block cookies. So yeah. it's out of the box, it's a good, good offering. How about email? So email, a lot of people use Gmail. Again, sure do. <laughs> another free Google product. Now I'm not saying don't use it, but what I am saying is it's well known that they scan every single thing that comes through there. It's how they offer some of the convenience factors like telling you about deals and that sort of thing, right? Yeah. So if you're gonna use Gmail, my advice would be use it for things where you don't care that Google knows. If you have important information, you know, account information for other accounts, banking information, insurance mm -hmm. information, healthcare related information, use a more private service like ProtonMail. It's a well-known site. They encrypt all emails. They say they can't even read your email because wow. of the way the encryption's implemented. There are a number, number of offerings out there. ProtonMail, I personally use it for anything that I don't want the all-seeing eye of Google to know about. I hadn't even heard of ProtonMail. ProtonMail, it's a good offering. Good stuff. Dave, always appreciate My you coming My pleasure, in. Bob. Thanks Great for having me. Great information as always. It's 945. We'll be right back.